Hi. You can probably guess from the title of this video that I will be talking about how to minimize a bed bug infestation. I was in an apartment where I had to deal with these things, and let me tell you, it was miserable. It was quite literally an itchy hell on earth. Because I would get bit, and then I would feel the itch about six or seven hours later, and it interfered with my work. And I was afraid to go to sleep at night because I knew I was going to get bit. With a problem of this magnitude, I feel like it's a very important to share information on how we can deal with these problems, like bed bugs. In my personal opinion, I think the first thing that you need to do when you're dealing with a bed bug infestation is nothing that's physical or chemical. Rather, it's mental. And what you do is you have to declare war on the bed bugs. If you're passive about bed bugs and the treatments thereof, you won't win. They will, they will just keep coming back in bigger and bigger numbers. So, with that being said, the first rule of any kind of combat is know your enemy. This is about the size of a bed bug, that little dot right there. Most of them are actually smaller, and they are very thin. If I held up these two flashcards, an adult bed bug could hide right in between them. Now, in terms of their behavior, bed bugs are very decisive creatures. Most of them. What they do is they stay in their hiding spot all day. And when they can detect that you are present, they will uh, they will quite quite literally run to you, take about thirty seconds to feed, and run back. No pit stops, no breaks, no detours. Now, as the infestation gets worse, you'll start to see bed bugs that seem to be wandering around aimlessly. That's because they don't feel threatened anymore, and so. They wander around with nothing to do because they don't, they aren't threatened. So you have to make them fear you, basically. So another uh, characteristic of bed bug behavior is that they do not like hair. That's partially because of the way their body is shaped, because they they have a flat uh, flat body, and all the legs are kind of tucked up tucked underneath. This kind of body shape um, doesn't allow them to move around hair very easily, hairy surfaces. Now, the little ones can move in between the hairs, un unless, of course, you know, they're very thick, like on top of your head or on your face. Um, but if st uh, surfaces like your arm, the little ones will go for your arm. They won't go for pets because pets are, you know, balls of hair, basically. And uh, there's a common myth out there, put out by a lot of bed bug experts, that they only feed in the nighttime, after 12. And that's false, I'm sorry to say, because I fell asleep on a couch at 1 in the afternoon and woke up 4 hours later with 40 new bites on my arm. So to all you experts out there watching your video, watching this video, you're wrong. Sorry. So let's examine our, the arsenal here. These are the top four weapons that I that I prefer to use against bed bugs. You got sprays, diatomaceous earth, the dryer, heat-based weapons, furnace, you know, and your iPod. Yeah, I'm going to explain that at the end of this video. And it's kind of a nifty technique, but it, can, it only works if you do everything else. I'll start with the spraying. When you go to the store to buy bed bug sprays, um, make sure the can actually says bed bug on it, because if it doesn't, it won't work. Now once you have sprays that are specifically meant for bed bugs, what you do is you take your mattresses put them outside, tear off any labels, any stickers they have, cut off any any tags, 
and spray the whole thing. Both your box springs and your, your spring mattresses. Ah. Ah. Sorry. And then when you spray your room, you spray everything. Everything that's not electronic, that you, that you don't put your hands on a lot. Um, spray inside drawers. Spray around your baseboard. And don't sleep in that room for about 24 hours. So find some other place to sleep for the night that nobody else has slept in in a long time. So, you know, roll out a, a, a pad in the kitchen or something because they don't like to hang around kitchens because there's no people to feed off of. It's another thing, they only feed on humans. The next thing that you use is diatomaceous earth. This is a white powdery substance made from crushed up sea seashells and it can be ordered from Amazon and uh, I think twenty dollars gets you about five pounds and that's that's all you all you'll need um, and make sure it's food grade stuff if you don't get the food grade stuff and you inhale it your lungs are gonna have a bad time and uh, it's actually toxic toxic if it's not food grade that just means it it's crushed up more finely basically the idea with a diatomaceous earth is that if a bed bug crawls over the stuff it cuts them up and dries them out so what you want to do with it is you want to cut a little hole in the bag and put it in every single outlet unscrew unscrew the little switch plate take it off and you know put a little put a little bit in each each outlet and if you want to be really extreme put put a little covering over your entire mattress this will it'll last for about two weeks before you have to apply a new a new coat um, but I don't recommend that so the next things I'm going to be talking about is your dryer furnace and laundry habits dry everything that you have that you put through the laundry on the hottest setting this kills both the eggs and the bed bugs themselves. They die at 120 degrees Fahrenheit, 49 degrees Celsius. I have heard of some cases where people have turned their furnace up to 120 degrees and left the house for about three days. Um, and I've heard of some cases, some rare cases, where that has completely eliminated the problem and they never had, never, never had saw any another bed bug again. I can't confirm that, but if you if you want to try that. By all means, be my guest. So this final method that I'm going to explain in the last two minutes is the frequency generator method, or iPod method. Now, what you do is you download a frequency generator, and you set it to 7 to 8 kilohertz. And this is what it sounds like. You can hear that high-pitched noise, and it drives the bed bugs nuts, so they, they will flee. I recently discovered this method, and I haven't been bitten in about three weeks since I, I left this on for about five hours while I left the house, and I have, haven't heard from a bed bug. I've only seen one, and I have not get, get, had, had any bites at all. I'm going to turn this off now because it's really annoying. Um, I don't recommend using using the iPod alone. I what I recommend is you do everything here, then the iPod. You can also use your computer and for frequency generating software. Um, I've provided links in the description for downloading software for you for your computer where you can play a seven to eight kilohertz frequency. I didn't mention that already. 7 kilohertz to 8 kilohertz. So, 30 seconds left in the video. I wish you luck. Um, and remember, I personally, I don't think anything is too extreme when dealing with bed bugs because they are very persistent. So, be vigilant. Good luck.